This is the final problem from the 2012 AP Calc AB multiple choice set. It is a calculator question. We will need the calculator to finish this problem off. And what they're talking about is a region in the coordinate plane that sits in the first quadrant bounded below by the graph of y equals x squared and above by the graph of y equals square root of x. This region is the base of a solid whose cross section is perpendicular to the x-axis or squares. What is the volume of the solid? So starting with just a sketch of the region R, we have y equals x squared, we have y equals square root of x. The intersections of those graphs are pretty nice, 0, 0, and 1, 1. You can confirm that either with the calculator or without the calculator. Uh, what we are told is that this flat two-dimensional region is the base of a solid. So we have to envision the solid coming up off of this base out of the screen toward us. And then if we take a cross section perpendicularly to the x-axis, perpendicular to the x-axis would obviously mean we're taking this vertically. If we slice through that solid vertically and remove that slice, what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be looking at a square face. So this square face has a little bit of thickness to it because we to cut that sliver of the solid out we have this tiny tiny difference in x values that we went across so you see i've labeled the thickness of that the small dimension on the slice as delta x now the the edge that i've shaded on the slice with yellow and the slice itself in the coordinate plane also shaded in yellow is to show that there is a direct relationship between this flat edge of the 3D cross section needing to fit perfectly right down back into the base of the region from where it came. So there's a direct correspondence between this slice in the coordinate plane and this edge on the three-dimensional cross section. And the reason why that's significant is because in order to finish this problem, what we have to do is we have to approximate the volume of this one cross section that we've removed and then we're going to have to use the definite integral as a tool to add together infinitely many of those cross of those cross sections volumes so what is the height of this slice from top to bottom that's got to be a difference in y values i need the y value up here the y value up there is going to be y equals square root of x this is a graph of y equals square root of x and the y value down here is going to have to be equal to y equals x squared that labeling for that height works no matter where we take the slice, right? If I take the slice over here, I still have the top of the slice at y equals square root of x, bottom of the slice at y equals x squared. If I take the slice over here, I still have the same top and same bottom of the slice on that stretch. So what's the area of the face of this cross section? Well, it's just going to be the height that we just labeled times itself or the height squared. If I want the approximate volume of this one cross section that we've drawn, I just have to take the area of the face, so the expression we just mentioned, right, the height squared times the thickness, which is delta x, and if I would like to add together infinitely many of those cross sections volumes across the interval from 0 to 1, which is where these slices are going to range between, I'm going to have to use the integral as a tool to add together infinitely many of these products. By definition, an integral adds together infinitely many products of expressions involving x and delta x. So we're using the integral as a tool to add together all of the possible slices, all the possible cross sections that we could have taken. Uh, the calculator is in play here. So if you broke this, broke the calculator out and, and used your calculator's capability to evaluate a definite integral for you, once again, I have my TI-83 call sequence. You might have a TI-84, uh, something that has a bit nicer of a call sequence than a TI-83 does. This is what I've got in my classroom, so that's what you see me using right here to close out this video. I guess we want to figure out what the answer is, so 0.1285. I guess 0.1285 is going to, oh, a little bit of lag here, sorry. 0.1285 is going to correspond to, oh man, more lag, option A.